This episode is brought to you in part by Four Seasons Roofing out of Chardon, Ohio. Danny Anderson, he owns, the, he owns Four Seasons. Those guys do a great job. Four Seasons Roofing and Construction. Danny Anderson, it's a wrestler-owned business supporting other wrestler-owned companies like us over here at Drew Blog. So go give Danny and the guys at Four Seasons Roofing and Construction a call. Not only do they have offices here in Ohio, they also have offices down in Florida now. So go check out Four Seasons Roofing and Construction out of Chardon, Ohio. Tell them I sent you. This episode is powered by Cauliflower Combat, guys. If you want to head over there, check out caulifloweracombat.com. Use my code. It'll get you a discount when checking out. Cauliflower Combat, guys. Sal, Clash of Combat, all powered, all powered by Cauliflower Combat, including Jax Forest and Ladarian Lockett and myself. So head over there. Use my code right here in the description below and uh, tell them I sent you. Good Monday morning, everybody. I wanted to hop on here and uh, talk a little wrestling for uh, your Monday. You know, we got uh, we had some really good wrestling this weekend. You had uh, some Big Ten action going on, some Big Twelve action yesterday. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to get into that. Wanted to uh, touch a little bit on the uh, Saint Edward Eagles. We started the uh, the state duel uh, season kicked off this weekend so state duels are in process uh, a bunch of teams were wrestling this weekend but st edward they wrestled brunswick in the first round of the state duels and they shut them out 81 to nothing uh so shout out to the guys over there at st edward coach heft does a great job getting everybody ready this time of the year for the postseason uh and they shut them out 81 to nothing that's insane uh, I think that's just three points shy of a perfect duel. Perfect duel being, uh, I think, 84 points. And they blanked them. 81 to nothing. Just three points shy of a perfect duel. So shout out to the boys at St. Ed's. Way to get it done. Uh, and then shout out to anybody that wrestled uh, this past weekend. Uh, junior high level for the OAC Junior High Districts at Brexville. And then I think you had one at Norwalk also. Uh, Chase didn't wrestle this weekend. This was like the first weekend in a while that Jess and I had off. So we kind of just did did a lot of watching of wrestling. Kind of bummed that Chase didn't get to wrestle. Uh, he uh, he missed a practice on Thursday, unfortunately. Um, and so he uh, I wasn't gonna have him cut a bunch of weight just to make make it you know make it to districts and 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 not feel well and not wrestle good. So uh, I think we're gonna retry on the 18th at the next district opportunity for the OAC to get him down qualified for states. Uh, so yeah, Jess, we did a lot of uh, relaxing because I think you guys all know we live in the car. We're always on the go. Uh, so it was kind of nice just to watch some wrestling for once and not have to be running around mat to mat uh, and all that good stuff. So we got, you know, we're kind of filling our calendar for the next couple of months. So if you, uh, if you want us to come cover another duel or if you want us to come to a tournament right before, you know, sectionals and districts and all that gets ready to start up, please let us know so we can, uh, again, uh, file for some media credentials for your event that you want us to come cover. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be postseason here real soon. This month is going to fly by and uh, we're going to be at the state tournament before you know it at the Schottenstein Center. So let us know. Uh, but we are taking bookings now for the state tournament. Uh, for NHSCAs, all that good stuff. But yeah, the state tournament, if you want photos, video, all that good stuff, let us know uh, so we can get that taken care of, get you marked down so that we know who we're covering exactly that weekend. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. This is, this is the heart of the wrestling season. This is where the grind really gets going. Um, you know, it's hard to stay healthy for a full season. I get it, especially at that college level. We had some, uh, there was some really, really good college wrestling on Friday night. Uh, I think everybody was kind of tuned into the Big Ten. You had Ohio State and Penn State. And then you had uh, the one that I think was the, the most entertaining was the Michigan. They came out and they just smacked Iowa in the mouth right away uh, and, and got it got off to the races, really. They were they were leading, I think, at one point, 18 to 3, something like that. But they ended up getting the win over Iowa 24 to 11, which absolutely insane. Uh, D'Agostino getting a huge win uh, at 125. He uh, beat Drake Ayala. It was a tiebreaker. A uh, couple calls. You know, they went Michigan's way. It was it was a great match by the two. And D'Agostino, literally, I think from the clip that I saw, like literally just hanging on to get that win uh, to keep position there so that, you know, Michigan was able to get that win there, 125. Raguson did his job at 133. Iowa didn't send out their stars. So Raguson took care of work there, winning 5-2. to two. And then the, the match of the weekend, I think everybody's going to be talking about this for the next week. Sergio Lemley taking out Real Woods, which is it, real crazy. <laughs> like, that is insane. Um, real Woods has been on, on a fire since last year. 
Um, granted, Aliras isn't isn't at 141 this year, but Sergio Lemley, the freshman from Michigan, goes out there and doesn't just beat Real Woods by like a couple points or a fluke takedown. He majors him 14 to two. He beat Real Woods 14 to two. Like try to try. I'm still trying to comprehend it because one, I haven't myself really seen so much of Sergio Lemley before. I know he's a stud, but I didn't know that much about him until until he took out real woods like this. That's like insane. I think it's a great win for the kid. And now everybody's gonna be talking about Sergio Lemley. Everybody. Literally everybody all week. And I wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprising if he if he got Big Ten wrestler of the week. Uh there's a there's there's a lot of good wrestling as everybody knows every week. Uh, there's, there's a ton of good storylines in the big 10. Like even just yesterday, you had the Rooks brothers for Indiana stepping up. Uh, they were, Indiana was trailing 18 to nothing, uh, to Michigan state at the half at the, uh, excuse me, intermission. And they rallied back to win, uh, 23 to 18. Absolutely, absolutely insane. And then, uh, Fungano getting the, the millisecond takedown. Um, absolutely insane. I'm going to, I'm going to post that fun, uh, Fungano. I think that's how you say his name. Let me let me double check. I think that's how you say his name. Um, Fungaro. I'm sorry. Fungaro. Um, but yeah, millisecond takedown. We're, we're going to show that clip here in a little bit, but that was absolutely insane. But back to this Michigan-Iowa duel. Uh, Austin Gomez, he wrestled Voinovich. Voinovich back in the lineup. And uh, man, Austin Gomez looking really, he's looking tough, looking really good. Looks like he's healthy. So that's cool to see. Uh, Will Luan stunned the crowd and got another big win over Iowa the other night, beating Jared Franick. He beat Franick, and it was a great match, tiebreaker match. Uh, Luan, man, he, we all know everybody. Everybody kind of jokes, and it, you know he he keeps these matches really close, and and he does, he does. He's really good at keeping a match close with these really good wrestlers. Uh, but he was, he was able to get the win over Franick uh, on Friday night, which was huge, huge for Michigan. Uh, they literally needed everything to go their way, and they had it. Everything just perfectly uh, worked out for the Michigan Wolverines last week uh, on Friday. There, uh, Shane Griffith got it done, beating he majored Patrick Kennedy, got on top, and just went to work. Uh, Shane Griffith is a stud. Just as as I mean, NCAA champ a couple years back, and just just a beast on top. And then you got Glazier; he got a win over Stragow. Uh, Davison beating Bradley Hill 11 to two Bradley Hills had some good wins this year, but Davison bouncing back after that loss to, uh, uh, to Feldman against Ohio state. Um, and then at 184 Riggins defeat, uh, decision Walker six to five and it, yeah, 197 there. Stragow was, you know, not, he was trying his best not to give up the tech, but unfortunately, you know, Glazier just kept coming and he ended up getting the tech there, but yeah, shout out to Michigan getting that win 24 to 11 over Iowa. Uh, at home, I'm sure it was absolutely bonkers at the Chrysler Center uh, on Friday night. And then, uh, you know, everybody else tuned into that, you know, Ohio State, Penn State. Absolutely. I think oh, I think the score was closer than, uh, you know, you know, the score was close. The matches were closer than what the score is, was what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, it, 28 to nine doesn't reflect really what how good the boys from Ohio State wrestled against Penn State. Yeah, it's a loss. It's their first loss in the Big Ten. They're five and one now in the Big Ten after beating Rutgers yesterday. Um, but how about 125 pounds? Like that's what I really want to talk about here is uh, the 125 pound match. Um, Vinny Kilkiri gets the takedown at the end of the match. He goes dub, uh, double unders and takes down Braden Davis takes him down literally and then puts him to his back and then you have the ref no call because of you know reaction time you get you know however you know you get two minutes of reaction time now i guess uh but davis was on his back fighting off his back and he count it looks like the ref swiped twice at least uh calls a no no takedown um and then you know tom ryan obviously throws the brick and the brick they, they go back they review it you think after reviewing this you would clearly see that it's a takedown award the three maybe even back points, but no, it doesn't happen. And Twitter just went nuts and rightfully so, because how do you, how, how at this level at the big 10 and with instant replay now involved in our sport, how are we still getting these things wrong? Like I slowed down, sped up every angle. You got a cameraman on every corner of every Big Ten mat, and you still can't get it right. Was it 
ego? Was the ref so hell bent that he wanted to not be wrong that he just continued to say that there was a no call, no takedown? Like, what is it? Like, why? Why can't we get this right? Why at this level, at the Big Ten, the premier conference in college wrestling, why can we not get this right? When arguably have one of the best uh, officials off to the side too. You know, Angel Rivera, and, and he's, he's, he's right there. And the, we still can't get this right. I, I'm puzzled by it. I think everybody else is puzzled by it. It's just not what we need for the sport. I mean, and two, I just don't think, well, how do we have officials that are officiating on the mat how are they? How are they still? Call, you know, they're they're reviewing their own call. Why don't we have a neutral party? Why don't we have someone like when you see the NFL, they get the calls reviewed. It's uh, they send it to New York or wherever to to review. Why are we? Why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we doing that with the sport of wrestling? A, a neutral party that isn't there, or at least somewhere up there that, that the ref isn't on the mat making the call. We need someone who's away from the mat to make the decision. It, it, and still, I'm sure it's human error. We're going to still get calls wrong, but we can't here in 2024 with video review, uh, cameras on every corner of the mat. We still can't get it right. And, and, and it's just terrible because a guy like Vinny Kilkery could, could have had a big win there over Braden Davis. Um, so that, that kind of stinks. Uh, and I'm not even an Ohio State homer. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from Ohio, but like, I'm not an Ohio State homer. I'm not always rooting for the Buckeyes. Uh, but I just think, that, you know, I'm going to call it how I see it. I just think that he got robbed. Uh, and, and this needs to be looked at. It needs to be looked at because we need to do a better job of calling these matches, especially at the Big Ten. Just in general, the sport in general, um, need to call it even across the board. And then Buzakis, Buzakis getting a nice win over Nagao. Uh, Buzakis had a tough schedule this week, having Nagao, and then on yesterday having to wrestle uh, Dylan Shaver. Like that's a that's two tough dudes, and he he gets the win over Nagao, thirteen to seven, put up thirteen points. So uh, shout out to Nick Buzakis there. Nice win there. Uh, Bo Bartlett. This was the match I think a lot of people were excited to see. Bartlett and Mendez. Uh, Bartlett getting the win in overtime. Uh, got the take down there. It was a really good match. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, two super athletic dudes there going at it. Uh, but shout out to Bo Bartlett. Good win for him over uh, Jesse Mendez. And you had Tyler Kasich just doing what Tyler Kasich does. He's he's a machine. He's a tough, tough, tough kid that just doesn't stop. Keeps coming at you the entire time. He beat Dylan D'Amelio 7-1. Uh, to one. And Levi Haynes doing what Levi Haynes does. You know, uh, Patty Gallagher's not in the lineup. He's hurt. And so Wilcox goes out there and uh, Haynes beats him 11-3. to three, Gets the major. Uh, so that, that helped Penn state big there, you know, getting the, getting the points there. Cause they didn't have any bonus points up until that match. And then you had mess at 165, just a point shy, uh, a takedown away really from getting, getting a major there too. Uh, but he beat Hepner and then Starachi, Starachi and Rocco Welsh. That was a brawl. It was a, it was a good match. Rocco Welsh held him to four points, uh, four to two. Uh, so one, you know, just. Two really good, two good guys. I mean, the freshman, let alone wrestling Starachi like that, you know, not backing down. Really cool to see Rocco Welsh really coming, coming to his, to his, uh, you know, coming to his true, you know, form. I guess is what I, it was. What I'm, I guess I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, he's the kid's really, really good. I think we all knew this uh, coming in that Rocco Welsh was going to be uh, make an impact right away, and so it, that's cool to see Rocco Welsh doing his thing. Ryder Rogatsky, that was the, I think that was the steal of the match, getting the pin over Bernie Truax at four, three minutes and fifty nine seconds. Um, I don't think anybody before the duel, if you would have said, you know, hey, Ryder Ryder Rogatsky is going to go out there and pin Bernie Truex, and uh, everybody kind of would have looked at you and been like, mm, I don't think so, but he did. He got the pin, and then. 197. Penn State got the bonus points. <laughs> Aaron Brooks doing Aaron Brooks things. I mean, the guys in the in the Olympic uh, going to be competing for an Olympic trial uh, spot and probably a spot in the finals against uh, David Taylor. You know, so the guy's the real deal. And, and he he teched Geog and got the tech. Um, and then you got Kirk Fleet. I was I was the other day talking about this matchup, Kirk Fleet and uh, Feldman, and I said that I thought this would be a really good. I thought it'd be a good. Test for Feldman to see where he lies uh, at the heavyweight because uh, he's beat he beat Davis in the week prior and so I wanted to see where he stacked up against Greg Kirkfleet and Kirkfleet just completely ran away with the match beating him twelve to nothing I think Feldman was just kind of a little outmatched uh, but we'll see what happens come Big Ten because they're going to see each other again and uh, Feldman has just gotten better and better and better as the year has gone on so we'll see what happens the next time they do get to see each other 
Uh, but Penn State, sh- they showed up and they uh, kind of just beat on Ohio State certain weights. But uh, there were some really good matchups early on, like the Braden Davis one. I, I clearly think that Kilkiri won that match. Buzakis, great win for Ohio State there. But Bartlett and Mendez, that could have went either way. Uh, and then, you know, you had Wilcox. You know, he, he the only thing Wilcox, I think he could have done was just keep it close against Levi Haynes. But, you know, he does. He gives up the major. Uh, so that's where Ohio, Penn State got the win was the bonus points. And then, you know, Kirk Valley and Aaron Brooks doing what they do. They're, you know, I think, I think more people from Penn State probably thought that Starocki was going to beat Welsh worse than he did. Uh, so, yeah, I think that kind of that's kind of a little bit. I know Rocco Welsh is going to tell you that it's not an, a moral victory, but Rocco, that's a moral victory. That's a that's a good uh, that's a good step in the right direction for Rock, Rocco Welsh because he's uh, he's going to be ready and hungry, hungry for sure. Come time for Big Tens. Um, but yeah, this week we got a. I got myself a busy week. We're gonna be over at Lake Erie on the eighth. West Liberty's coming to town. That's a top five matchup right there uh, with Lake Erie and West Liberty. Gonna be some really really good matchups. You have Corey Gamut in the lineup. I believe Lake Erie's got a full healthy lineup. I don't know uh, for certain about West Liberty. That's gonna be a fun duel though. So we'll be there on the eighth. I know Go Ohio Cast Zeb. He'll be in the building as well. He'll be calling the match. Uh, but we'll be bringing you content from the West Liberty uh, Lake Erie duel this week as well. And as well as Friday, we're going to be over at Cleveland State. Cleveland State taking on Edinburgh. Uh, Cleveland State's looking to improve on the uh, on the record and on the MAC. Uh, they're, they're looking to take a win over Edinburgh, which I would, I'm guessing, we'll go over, we'll go over to WrestleStat right now and see what the what we got as far as a prediction of score. We'll go here. And again, if you want to go check out WrestleStat, WrestleStat does a really cool thing where you can take two teams and you can compare them and you can punch in whatever wrestler you want to and compare them. And uh, it'll give you the, the prediction of who they think is going to win. So we'll go to comparisons here. Let's see what we got for the Cleveland State Edinburgh duel. And we'll do the, we'll do the Lake Erie uh, West Liberty one for fun too. Duel. Click on duel. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, what do we got here? So we got, well, we're going to start because we're in Division Two right now. So we're going to start with Lake Erie and West Liberty University. Compare, click compare. At 125. Anthony Segaris. And Alex Crane. So they got Segaris winning this match 12 to 5. But if you look at the team score, let's see, the series is tied at 1 to 1. And they got Lake Erie College over West Liberty right now, 20 to 15. That's the prediction early on. I'm just don't shoot the messenger. That's all I'm saying. Uh, is the Lake Erie is gonna beat uh West Liberty. That's what it says via wrestle stat. So uh, but they do. They gotta wrestle this Thursday. It's gonna be a really good duel. Uh, I'm excited. To, I'm excited to see that you're gonna have uh, Scolo and Wayne, uh, Ryan Wayner going at it. That'll be a good one because Wayner just loves to scrap. Super scrappy kid, and that's why his nickname is Scrap. Uh, but Vincent Scolo, super tough kid, all American. Um, Corey Gamut and Grace Kavon, or Kaivon Grace. That'll be a good one too. Grace is a tough kid. Christian Small and Nico Taddy will be a brawl. Uh, Christian Small is super tough on top. He gets on top and he's a leech. He just doesn't come off. He scores back points all the time. Uh, and Nico Taddy's a freshman, a freshman that has found himself all the way. Uh, he's been ranked pretty high this season, um, but he's had a couple losses uh, as as of January. There, he took a loss on the fifth and the sixth. Uh, but then you also you got Christian Small, who's currently ranked number one at 149 pounds here on WrestleStat. So that'll be that'll be a really good brawl. That's uh, number one and number seven there at 149. Uh, Haskin, Jack Haskin, ranked number two in the country, and Jamar Williams, who's ranked sixth at 157. That'll be a great matchup. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see. The last match was against number four. So Williams lost to Barr, uh, Devin Barr, and Haskins' last match was against number three, and he won. He, he beat Gabe Johnson, eighth one, but Haskin does have a win over Barr, who Barr just beat Williams. Uh, so let's see. Haskin beat Barr 14 to 5. So this is going to be this this is points that Lake Erie is going to need to get here at 157. So shout out though to Jack Haskin being ranked number 2 in the country, man. Really cool. Uh really hard working kid. They're just a good kid all the way around. Um 
Alec Cook and Josh Howie. They got Howie winning this match by a score of seven to six. Uh, let's see. James Penfold. They got Penfold over Chavez. Uh, tech fall, 20 to two. That's what they, that's what they got for, uh, and then they got the team score right there going into 184 is 20 to three. Um, so yeah, we're going to be at Lake Erie on Thursday, Lake Erie Thursday, Cleveland state on Friday. So we'll go to the Cleveland state one here real quick. I'll give you what the, the prediction says. We're going to go division two comparisons, dual meet, uh, division one. Comparison, dual meet, Cleveland State and Edinburgh. Cleveland State, Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Click compare. All right. They have, let's see. They have Cleveland State winning this duel 28 to 6 over Edinburgh. So uh, they got Ben Aranda here getting a major at 25. Uh, Molchak getting a win. That's seven to nothing. Leighton getting a win. Eleven to nothing. Douglas Terry getting a win. Fourteen to nothing. Heil getting a win. That's eighteen to nothing right off the rip until one hundred and sixty-five, where they have Max Kirby uh, of Edinburgh getting a win, seven to six, and then they have DeAndre bouncing back. Cleveland State at one seventy-four getting a win, twenty-one to three. Uh, one eighty-four. They have Evans of Edinburgh over Lions. So that brings it to 21 to 6. You got Ben Smith at 197. Uh, ben Smith winning 9 to 5. They've got, so that's 24 to 6. And then at heavyweight, they got Bucknovich winning by a major. That brings your score 28 to 6. So we'll see what happens on Friday with Cleveland State and Edinburgh. So that'll be a good duel. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, basically, uh, let's see what else I got for you guys. You got Bellarmine. Bellarmine moved to 13. Sorry, not Bellarmine. Bellerman moved up 13 and 0, uh, and then they wrestled Citadel yesterday. They took a loss, their first loss of the season. Uh, Bellerman losing to Citadel yesterday. They got beat up pretty good, but they were able to win. Uh, they beat Davidson the other night. They beat up on Davidson pretty good too. Uh, let's see what the score of that duel was. Let's see, Campbell and Campbell and Appalachian State the other night. Campbell getting the win. Uh, so they got bragging rights now in the SoCon. So shout out to Campbell and the Camels, the Fighting Camels. Uh, let's see. Navy beat up on Lock Haven. Uh, but yeah, uh, going on to what I was talking about a little bit earlier, you had Indiana and Michigan State yesterday. Um, Indiana and Michigan State, they were, Indiana was trailing 18 to nothing uh, at the intermission, and they stormed all the way back uh, in the Rooks brothers. The Rooks brothers and Fungaro getting like, some crazy things to just happen and go right. Uh, Fungaro got a, sec a, a millisecond takedown to win the match, literally milliseconds. Like the refs, I'm, they got the call right, I think. Um, but then again, that leads me back to what I was talking about earlier. If they can make that call and get that one right with milliseconds on the clock, they can do a better job and get these other calls right too. Uh, but shout out to Graham Rooks, his brother. They got it done. Graham Rooks got the wrestler, the match. He got the MVP. So shout out to those guys. Indiana coming back from 18 to nothing uh, to get a win over Michigan State yesterday. Uh, and uh, currently right now, I've got a little person standing next to me. Uh, Harper, what, what, what's up, sweetie? Oh, you want to pay to watch something? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm being summoned right now, guys. So uh, I hate to cut this short, guys, but I wanted to, you know, kind of just touch base on some of the wrestling that went down this weekend. Uh, stay tuned. I'll bring you some more scores and uh, coverage of what we got going on this week. Again, we'll be at Lake Erie on Thursday and then Cleveland State on Friday. So stay tuned, guys. I'll be bringing you something later in the week. Take care, guys.